Hey everybody and welcome to today's workout. Today we're going to be doing a core and balance class. This class is going to be using the BOSU Balance Trainer. I have the Sport model, which I like because it is smaller, it's a little bit more compact, it's a little bit lighter than the others, and I can keep it in my car and just bust it out whenever I'm at the park or at a client's house as I'm a personal trainer. It's just easier to carry around with me. So I really like this one in particular. Go ahead and grab your BOSU Balance Trainer, meet me back here on the mat, and we'll begin. Okay, my friends, so we're gonna start by just moving the Balance Trainer off to the side because we're gonna start with some core work to just activate. So if the focus is balance, your balance primarily comes from your core stabilizing muscles, but then it also comes from the single leg muscles, um, the, like your single leg strength and ability to know where your body is in space, which is called proprioception. Anytime you're doing balance training, you wanna incorporate your core strength training as well, and that balance training in turn is going to help strengthen the core and work on your sense of proprioception. So we're gonna start with by activating the core with some dead bugs. So come onto your back. Now what's really important to engaging your core is understanding that you want everything kind of coming inward towards your spine. Imagine engaging the core from your ribs all the way down, from your side of your ribs all the way down, and from your back, the lowest part of the ribs, all the way down to the hip bones. All of that musculature, you want to be coming in and hugging towards the spine so that when you lift up and you come into your dead bugs, you look down at your belly and you don't see a bread loaf through the center. If you are seeing a bread loaf down the center, that is a sign that you're not bracing your core properly. And it puts a pressure through the linea alba, that, that fascia in the center of your core. So you just wanna be sure that you lower your head, you relax your belly, and then you reset by drawing all of that musculature around the lumbar spine. If you're not really sure what that feels like, what you can do is just lay down, head is down, take your hands to your sides and do a little cough, go <coughs> That cough is going to involuntarily contract your core the proper way. So find that sensation <coughs> and see if you can hold that sensation through the core as you also breathe and as you do the exercise. So I want you to think about that anytime I tell you to engage your core. All right, for your dead bugs, you're gonna lift your arms. Imagine you're holding a watermelon. Push that watermelon up towards the ceiling. So watch my shoulders. It's the difference between this, which I don't want you to do, and this, which is gonna help to engage your core. So you're continually pushing that watermelon away. At the same time, the core is engaged, so you can do that little cough if you need to. <laughs> and then your legs are lifted, shins are parallel to the ground. Now, option one is to stay here and do the movement from here. Option two is to lift the head and shoulder blades off the ground, and then you're gonna extend opposite arm, opposite leg. As you do this, you wanna be sure that your low back stays glued to the ground. If you feel that your low back is arching up and away from the ground, you wanna dial it back to a more modified version. So your head will definitely be down, and instead of extending through the leg, you're just gonna keep, the, keep this shape, this 90 degree bend in the knee, and tap the heel down. So you kind of think of your heel drawing like the arc of a rainbow. You just tap it down and bring it back up. Now, if you go down and you feel your low back lifting even here with this modified version, dial it back even more. You don't have to go all the way down. Maybe it's just a little movement here through the legs, that's just the right amount of core stimulation that you need. So that's the first move. Let's go ahead and do 12 of these. So holding that watermelon, pushing it up towards the ceiling, lifting the legs, activating the core. <laughs> Option to lift the head, and here we go. 12, 10, up, <laughs> 11, <laughs> 10, Here's nine, eight, seven, six. Remember, keep that core in. Five, four, 
Low back glued to the ground. Three and two. And last one each side. Excellent. Come down onto your back and rest for a second. The next move we're going to be doing is a plank hold. So come onto your hands and knees. Option one. So before we even go into it, just make sure that you've braced your core. <laughs> Find that core brace. Option one is here. This is the plank hold. Option two, come up off the knees. This is the plank hold. You want to be sure you're not sinking into your shoulders like this, not sinking into your hips like this. You're going to push up and away like this. And this is your core hold. Legs are strong. We're going to hold for 20 seconds. So when you're ready, come into your plank position. That works best for you. And we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, done. Great. Come back onto your back. You're going to activate the obliques a bit. So arms by your side. You're going to peel your arms, heads, and shoulder blades off the ground and engage that core. Then you'll shimmy side to side, just tapping your fingers towards your ankles. Remember, core stays in towards your spine. So here we go. We're going to lift up and do 20 of these. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fantastic. All right, so we've got the core fired on and activated. Now it's time to get into our balance work. So go ahead and grab your BOSU balance trainer if you've got one. Now, if you don't have one or if you decide that as we do these moves, you're like, whoa, this is just a little too challenging for me. You can do this without the BOSU balance trainer and just work your way up to it. Because this thing is really challenging. Essentially, anytime you're working on your balance, the easiest way to work on it, like the step one, level one of working on your balance, is working on a hard surface. Step two is working on something that changes the, mm, the reliability of the surface that you're working on. So coming onto a mat is going to be a little bit more challenging than coming onto a hardwood floor or a tiled floor. When you get into something like this, you can see how um, unpredictable <laughs> this, the surface of the new floor is. So it's going to be much more challenging to balance. So if you are just starting out and you find the balance trainer is too difficult, just use the floor. It's totally fine. And work your way up. All right, so to start, we're going to do um, some moves using both of our legs at the same time. So you'll hop up onto your BOSU balance trainer. We're just going to do some uh, squats. So you're coming down and going up. And because the surface of our foundation is a little bit <laughs> uneven and unpredictable, you're constantly having to shift your weight to accommodate the sense of proprioception where you're like, whoa, this is a little challenging. And that's using your core, recruiting your core muscles and helping to improve your sense of proprioception as well. So we're just going down and up here. Let's do 10 more. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, keep your chest upright. Two, remember, core stays integrated. One. From here, we're going to march. 
I want to show it to you on the, the hard surface first, the floor, just so you can see what we're doing. So let's all do this together. You're going to sit down into a squat position. When you stand up, lift one leg and then lower back down into that squat position. And you're just continually lifting the leg as you essentially march from one side to the other. If that's challenging enough on the floor, stick with the floor position. Otherwise, come up onto your balance trainer. I'll do it from the side so you can see. We're going to do that same thing. So sit low, stand up. Sit low, stand up. You may find that one side is easier than the other. So especially if you've rolled an ankle or strained a knee, that side of your body is likely going to be a little bit more challenged than the other side. Let's do 10 more. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Fantastic. Okay, this next move, again, I want to do it on the floor first, um, just so you can decide whether or not you want to move up to the balance trainer. So first, we're just going to hop and land and stand. <laughs> hop, land, and stand on two feet. So we hop, land in a squat, and then stand up. Hop, land in a squat, and stand up. Now focus really on your form. When I hop, my knees are kind of driving out a little bit. They don't come in, but they don't also go way out. So you want to avoid having wobbly knees. It's a hop and stand. Let's try it on the BOSU balance trainer. So it's a hop and stand. Step down, hop, and stand. Hop and stand. Excellent. Let's do 10 more of these. 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, and one. Fantastic. Now we're going to make it a little bit more challenging. We're going to hop up with one leg. So again from the floor, it's a hop from two legs onto the one and see if you can stand. Then we do the other leg. Hop from two legs, see if you can stand. Hop to the right foot, hop to the left foot. If that feels good, let's go up onto the balance trainer. If it doesn't, stay on the floor. There's no shame in that. You'll buy the balance trainer or you'll get on the balance trainer once you feel like it's a sufficient enough exercise where it's no longer a challenge because you've got that musculature. All right, here we go. So we're going to hop and stand. Other leg. Hop and stand. Now this is where, so I injured my ankle, right? So I can really feel it on one leg, but it's much easier on the other. So you may notice that as well. Hop and stand. Aim to go right in the center of the balance trainer. And if you need to toe tap the other foot, that's fine. Hop and stand, hop, and stand. 10 more, 10, other leg, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Great job. Now we're going to, 
either tree pose on the floor or let's try it on the balance trainer. So for tree pose, we're going to bring the heel up onto the side of the leg, hands to hips, broad through the chest, stay nice and tall, and see if you can bring your foot onto your leg. If you need a toe tap, if you need to bring the hands out to the side, that's totally fine as well. Let's see if we can stay here for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great job. Let's do it on the other side. See how it feels on this side, and then we'll begin. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, wow, 2, and 1. Great job. <laughs> so that does it. This is Definitely one of those classes to begin to incorporate if you are working on your sense of proprioception, your single leg strength, maybe you're rehabbing an ankle or a knee, and you're just working on your balance and overall core strength. Definitely begin to incorporate this maybe two times a week. For like four to six weeks, you'll really see some improvement. Hope you enjoyed this class. Thank you so much for practicing with me, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.